。はい、それではセミナーを開催いたします。この後の進行は知事にお願いいたします。はい、えー、丹大臣聞こえますでしょうか。はい。Yes, thank you. Perfect. はじめまして、えー、宮崎県知事の河野と申します。本日は大変お忙しい中、このセミナーにオンラインでご参加をいただきましたことに心から感謝を申し上げます。尊敬する丹大臣に直接このようにお話ができる機会、大変ありがたく思っております。今日この宮崎県の会場には、高校生や大学生、若手経営者など18名も参加をしているところであります。その意味におきまして、今日のこのセミナーは3つの目的があります。本件の,あの正規、将来ビジョンをですね、考えるということ。それから二つ目には、大臣も大変重視しておられます、時代を担う若い世代への刺激をいただくということ。そして、台湾と宮崎の交流をさらに深めていくということであります。今日このセミナーの開催にあたりましては、福岡にあります、経済交流弁事所の陳明春所長にも大変ご配慮をいただいたところであります。丹大臣、また台湾政府の皆様に重ねて感謝を申し上げます。それでは、まず大臣からスピーチをお願いいたします。Thank you.、Um, it is my great honor、uh, to be here virtually、uh, at this meeting. I look very much forward、uh, to visit in person,、uh, and I must begin、uh, my speech by acknowledging uh, the, uh, my deep gratitude、uh, to the Japanese people and Japanese government、uh, for donating the AstraZeneca shots.、Uh, I received personally the shots、uh, from Japan、uh, that enabled me、uh, to travel、uh, worldwide. Uh, and as the Omicron variant、um, is、uh, being tackled、um, around the world,、uh, in Taiwan, we're now seeing、uh, for the second time this week、uh, zero COVID、uh, in the Omicron variant. So we have、uh, again successfully、uh, squashed、uh, the virus around here. And I do believe、uh, that this common、uh, urgency that's shared not just by Japanese people and Taiwanese people, but by everyone around the world, will create a neighborhood、uh, that feels、uh, much closer, even though we're now across the screen. We have the same experiences in the past couple of years. Uh, and to that end, uh, I will begin、uh, my remark by noting、uh, two things that I believe are very important for Taiwan's story of squashing the Omicron variant, and both、uh, have some connections、uh, to the input from the young people of youth engagement. As Taiwan's digital minister、uh, in charge for social innovation and youth engagement, we firmly believe. That it is the most important for us, for the young people, to set the trend, to point out what is going to happen, to ensure that those emerging trends that might be missed by people in the cabinet, including me, are pointed out in a very quick fashion. Indeed,、um, some of the familiar examples from Taiwan. For example, noting that there were、uh, SARS like cases in Wuhan in 2019, that was from a young doctor, not even 30 years old.、Uh, the invention of the mask rationing visualization map, again, from civic technologist in the Tainan city,、um, who's not、um, even 35 years old. So, very young people、uh, in charge of these、uh, early important measures. Now,、uh, last year, In May,、uh, when we noted the Alpha variant is much more viral than the previous、uh, original variant、uh, of the new COVID virus,、uh, what we have noticed is that we need really to get everyone into the habit of working with contact tracing without sacrificing any privacy. This is actually a very difficult social problem because if we rely on new technologies like Bluetooth, Or some advanced apps, it's very unlikely that the senior people or the people who are very young will be comfortable with those new technologies. On the other hand, if we do not use、uh, phones or technologies and rely only on handwriting or stamping, it is also almost impossible to do contact tracing as quick as the Alpha variant, not to mention the Omicron variant. So we need something that is both. Inclusive, taking care of the senior and the very junior people in both urban and rural areas, but also 
accountable, meaning that it can respond to the contact tracing needs, including privacy uh, concerns uh, in a way that is convincing to everyone. So everyone can feel safer, but the contact tracing people can uh, work faster. So the innovation, it turns out, takes two branches. One is the use of SMS. Because the elderly people, many of them have phones, but not necessarily smartphones. Even if they have the smartphone, not necessarily they will install apps uh, on it. But uh, if we print out uh, a, a random code, 15 digits of random code in each and every venue, and for every venue owner to self-service print that on their um, front door, then the elderly people, it is possible for them to look at those 15 digits and tweet uh, manually send an SMS uh, to the same number 1922, which is the toll free number for um, everything related to epidemic control. So by working on a previous generation of technology, ones that the elderly people were familiar with when they were relatively young, right? People who had a, a lot of uh, experience on SMS, they understand how it works and they trust the telephone companies reasonably, and the telephone companies doesn't really know what venue those 15 random digits correspond to, because it's individually easy to explain. We gain a lot more adoption in the rural areas and for the elderly people. On the other hand, we never uh, say that you cannot use paper. And people also innovated. Uh, my own grandma, uh, around 90 years old, never carries a phone, uh, not even a feature phone. Uh, with her, uh, and so she can actually use a seal, right, a, a wooden uh, block uh, with their uh, with her name uh, and contact number on it, and she would stamp uh, every time she enters a venue, uh, and that is also very quick and almost uh, contact free because the um, seal carries its own ink. So what I'm trying to say is that inclusive innovation takes care of the innovation that is empowering the people closest to the pain. Every time we introduce a new digitalization measure, it should empower people to connect with each other more. It should never take away uh, existing innovations or upcoming innovations. But whichever way, it could be stamping. Uh, the line company, for example, also added a new feature last June in response to our SMS-based contact tracing. So even though Line is not a Taiwanese company, uh, their um, developers in Taiwan work with the developers in Japan to create Line's feature to support this QR code-based contact tracing. And because a lot of senior people in Taiwan uh, use Line very regularly, so then they don't have to learn anything or download any new app. So without closing off emergent innovations, everything is uh, mutually accountable and everyone can if they have any doubt that uh, who is accessing their records and so on. There is a dedicated website sms.1922 the gov.tw that shows exactly which contact tracing people in which municipality or in which town have accessed your checking record for what purpose in the past 28 days. And it shows uh, exactly how many messages are deleted after 28 days. So this is what I mean by mutual accountability. I believe this is a model, inclusive accountability. It is a model that uh, ensures a plurality of innovations so that any corner in Taiwan, the very young people can work in a way that's a positive sum hand in hand across generations. The young people can innovate to include their own grandmothers of around 90 years old into the latest digital services instead of a top down way of a one size fits all way, which will necessarily create a zero sum uh, almost competing relationship uh, across generations. So I believe inclusive accountability is the key to the regional innovations to spread in the countrywide fashion and make the social solidarity stronger so that we can even uh, squash the Omicron variant. Of course, there are many other more examples, but I would prefer uh, to um, say that responding to the questions. And so that is my opening remark. Thank you. はい、えー、丹丹氏ありがとうございました。
あのデジタル技術を活用しながら、まあ、コロナ対応も含めてですね、若い世代の能力を活用し、そしてインクルーシブなイノベーションを進めていくこと、大いにあのヒントをいただいたように思います。それでは時間も限られておりますので、これから会場におりますものとの質疑応答に移らせていただきたいと思います。まず私からあの2点お伺いをしたいと思います。あの、大臣のこれまでの役割、あの、心から尊敬をしながら、そして、まあ、大臣が就任をされて仕事をされている状況がですね、やはり、えー、そうですね、あの、多くのアイデアやリソースを持った方をいかに結びつけて、新しいものをクリエイトしていくかという、まさにそういう、まあ、プロデューサー、サブのような役割を果たしておられるなという大変、あの、素晴らしいことだというふうに思います。大臣が就任されるにあたって3つの条件ですね。1つ、あの、フラットな立場からアドバイをする、をするというようなことで、就任をされたというふうに伺っておりますが、大臣が仕事をされる上で、あの、素晴らしいアイデアを作られたり、そこはよくわかるんですが、その上で、いろんな障害にぶつかることはないだろうかということで、2つの障害ですね。政治的な面という面での、課題というものに直面されたことはないでしょうか。あの、まあ、いろんな失敗というものは早く、それから公に徹底した透明性で何度も何度も失敗することが成功につながるということではありますが、その初期の段階の失敗を政治的に問われたり、また場合によっては政治勢力というものは、まあ、変化を嫌ったりというようなこともありましてですね、そのようなところでの障害を感じられたことはないだろうかというのが一点目。もう一つは、インターネット、これは大臣もおっしゃっておりますように、もう今の時代の人権であるということであろうかと思いますが、大変重要なものであり、そこに大きなパワーがあるわけですが、一面リスク、自由であるからこその排他性、攻撃性、さらなる脆弱性ということもあるんではないかというふうに考えております。この2点で、いろいろ課題に直面されたことはないのか、そしてそれを克服されることがあればですね、ヒントをいただければと思っております。Thank you.、Uh, these are all extremely good questions.、Uh, each one would take、uh, easily an entire day of seminar、uh, conference to answer, but I will try to be short.、Um, the first question about a culture、uh, that accepts failure. I think there are two kinds of failure. The first kind is that a failure that can only be remedied, fixed by a few people. And the second kind is the failure that can be remedied or fixed by anyone.、Um, the first type of failure is very hard to admit because if one admits that without a good solution, one looks very bad. But the second kind is okay to admit all the time. I will use one example.、Um, as you know,、uh, in 2020 in Taiwan, we rationed out the masks. Uh, every time、uh, that people queue in line to get some mask from pharmacies, every week they could get maybe two or three medical grade masks in the beginning. However, we incorrectly assumed that the pharmacies align perfectly with population centers.、Uh, we have a model that showed each average citizen in Taiwan h a v e an average, probably the same distance. To the、uh, pharmacy nearby because、uh, we think it's fair, so we distribute based on the location of pharmacies initially. However, because everyone can see which、uh, pharmacy received which mask and how those inventories deplete s over time, it's updated every 30 seconds called Open API. More than 100 different Maps, chatbots, and so on. Developers is like a distributive ledger that lets everyone see the real time inventory in all the 6,000 and more pharmacies. So people in the OpenStreetMap community very quickly discover that there is a bias because not everyone o w n a helicopter. The same distance on the map means nothing. People in the rural areas who rely on public transportation may take three hours. To reach a pharmacy that looks on the map the same distance、uh, when they connect better to the urban areas. So the initial distribution is wrong. It was a failure. But because of the real time inventory is published、uh, for everyone, there's no review、uh, or censorship from the central government. So when the opposition parties,、uh, member of parliament, 
interpolated, uh, asked the Ministry of Health and Welfare, the minister simply said, yeah, uh, the analysis is correct and legislator, please teach us how to make it better. Because after all, everyone has the same evidence. Everyone has the same data. So the people who point out the bias is now uh, having the responsibility also to come up with better suggestions. And we did get better suggestions around pre-registration, around use of convenience stores, which opens 24 hours and so on, which was implemented the next day. So anyone who discover anything wrong can actually propose something better because they have the same real-time data. And we simply say, yeah, legislator, you are right. And your idea is great. And 24 hours later, your idea become the national policy. And it makes accepting failures uh, not as failures, but as pivot. It's like a running a startup, we just pivot uh, to a different strategy. Now, the second question about anonymity on the internet. Indeed, we have seen anonymity as very important for people in power imbalance to uh, blow a whistle, for example, or to uncover something that is actually happening. On the other hand, it creates the possibility for one person to masquerade as 5,000 people and create a bullying situation, uh, but there's actually no such representativeness. So I think pseudonymity uh, is not the same as the ability to create 5,000 fake accounts. We should introduce mechanisms to prevent the creation of those fake accounts when we set up public squares, civic infrastructures on the internet, like a town hall, right? So in Taiwan, when we have a digital town hall on the JOIN, J-O-I-N platform, people uh, are authenticated using their phone number and with SMS, and the phone number needs to be issued by one of the uh, telecom carriers in Taiwan, not overseas. And so because of that, it's very difficult actually for a citizen to get 5,000 SIM cards. The anti-money uh, laundering service will discover that. Uh, and so because of that, we retain some sort of anonymity, but without the way to create fake accounts. I hope that answers your question. はい、ありがとうございます。えー、まあ、透明性、スピード感、そして、えー、まあ、公開性、まあ、そういったところでヒントをいただきました。ありがとうございます。それでは、ここからは若い世代からの質問をお受けいただければと思います。まず、高校生、どうでしょうか。あ、はい。では、どうぞ。はい。Uh, my name is Hinako Hakushima, and I'm a Miyazaki Aomiya High School student. We are, st uh, we are studying about world's, world's pro problems and making the solution for them. I want to do something for the world. So,、uh, what, what do you think even high school students can do? Thank you. Was that、Sorry. a question about how high school students can contribute? To the world. Yes. Okay. Thank you.、Um, when I started my first startup,、uh, I was a high school student.、Uh, I was 15 years old. I dropped out of the middle school、uh, to contribute、uh, to the world.、Uh, so I firmly believe the capacity of high school students when I was middle high.、Uh, I firmly believe that、uh, the lack of Of、um, bound experience、uh, to how things should be solved, of business as usual, is in fact、uh, the creativity that is innate、uh, in the middle high school students、uh, to contribute to the world. So the fresh perspective is a contribution. In Taiwan, Uh, when we introduced、uh, the joint platform of SMS authentication, we do not put an age limit on it.、Uh, and even、uh, people who are 16, 17, they are very active. Actually, they are the most active on the joint platform, even before they turn 
So we have many very innovative proposals. Some of them uh, correspond to uh, their own uh, life. For example, there is a very popular proposal that says uh, the class should begin uh, at a later day in the morning instead of asking all the students to come very early to the school because if you don't sleep enough, you don't um, remember anything you learned yesterday anyway. So sufficient sleep should be very important. And that is very popular, got a lot of signatures and we turned that into uh, actual policy uh, a couple weeks ago. So it's a very successful petition. But some of them uh, does not concern just the young people. For example, there was a proposal that said our signature drink, the bubble tea, creates a lot of plastic waste because uh, the takeouts always give you a plastic uh, straw, even if you don't ask for it. Uh, and so the petition says uh, that we need to use uh, reusable uh, cups and straws, or we must uh, make it from biodegradable material and so on. Obviously, it's not just for the young people, but the young people do not already have a habit of plastic straws. So uh, the proposer is actually just uh, turned 17 when she proposed uh, that thing. And again, uh, she gained thousands and thousands of support this time from 60 years old and 70 years old who care a lot about the environment. And they successfully uh, changed the regulation for our environmental protection administration so that the plastic straws are now essentially banned uh, from the major takeout venues on bubble tea. And there's a thriving economy uh, on reusable straws and packaging materials and other circular economy things. So I do believe that if there are digital public infrastructures, the very old and the very young because they both care about seven generations, many generations down the line. And uh, let's be honest, they have more time on their hands. Um, it's very essential for those two generations to work together on matters concerning sustainability. I hope that answers your question. あの宮崎でも若い皆さんの声をそうですね取り入れる仕組みを作らなきゃなと思いました。朝会議がなくなるかもしれませんね。はい、あの、まず最初それぞれのグループカテゴリーから一人ずつお話をいただければと思いますので、次は大学生グループどなたかお願いできますでしょうか。はい、では今手を挙げられた。と日本語で話します。えっと南九州大学の内田上生と申します
uh, that runs entirely uh, in the intranet, that runs uh, entirely on government premises uh, that uh, have our own cybersecurity uh, parameter and audits and so on, because after all, we do not want to be reliant on a single vendor uh, who is a subscription model. So we search for free software equivalents of Slack and there are many, but Rocket Chat is easy to change, easy to adapt. So we uh, used uh, Rocket Chat. But the use of free software carries its own responsibilities. We have to do the translation, a lot of translation ourselves. So we have to maintain the uh, uptime, the uh, operational stability of that and so on. Uh, so I'm not saying that everyone in every level of government should maintain their own Slack-like variant, but it's important to have this choice because if the term of service of Slack changes, uh, then you at least have something to fall back to instead of being held uh, captive. So I think it's important to learn the use of search engines, but whether you prefer Google or not is your choice. It's important to learn about group collaboration, but whether you use, I don't know, Discord or Slack or Rocket Chat, that's your choice. It's important to learn collaborative spreadsheets but whether you use uh, EtherCalc, which I maintain, uh, or a Sandstorm uh, or Google Spreadsheet, that's your choice and so on and so forth. I hope that answers your question. ありがとうございました。はい、ありがとうございました。はい、私も家族とのやり取りはスラックを使っております。県庁ではマイクロソフトチームズを使いましてまあ随分最近あのいろんな効率が図られたと感じておりますそれでは次はあの若手経営者の皆さんからご質問あじゃあ。Thank you. Um, I am with uh, CropWatch. My name is Kevin Cantrell. I am a software engineer, and I'd like to ask a question in English. Um, so over the past decade or so, we've seen a lot of uh, new LPWA technologies uh, coming out. What I'm wondering is, what do you think the most, uh, the largest difficulty these type of technologies will have over the next 10 years? Sorry, did you say PWA is in progressive web app? I, I missed the acronym. Uh, you, you said there's a lot of PWA uh, technology. Uh, sure, uh, LPWA, like low power wide area, such as uh, maybe LoRaWAN, Sigfox, or Helium. Oh, okay, okay, yes. And your question is uh, the thing like that. Um, what, what's the difficulty of the uh, deployment of these technologies over the 10 years? Is, is that the question? Yeah, like what what will be the most difficult factor for these to spread within the next 10 years? Well, I think the, the need uh, for these technologies will only increase. Uh, and uh, I think the uh, adoption itself is not uh, really a issue. The adoption really uh, is driven mostly uh, by people in the areas that's being served, how much um, say they have on the deployment of such technologies. Um, for example, uh, sidewalk, lab, well, maybe we, I should not mention specific ones, uh, but anyway, there are cases uh, around the world uh, where the deployment of such technologies uh, are generally seen as a top-down way. Uh, and the services, although it does provide public value, uh, it's not seen as inclusive or participatory enough so that people who end up being affected by it uh, takes it as a smart city, but not enabling smart citizens um, image. And, and once you get into that image uh, where it's empowering only the uh, people who are already quite powerful and not enabling uh, for people who are less powerful, then it could meet uh, public resistance uh, and the counter expertise would bring their own uh, alternatives that may be analog uh, or not using such technologies uh, or in a way that is counterproductive. Uh, in Taiwan, uh, we're very uh, adamant 
that uh, the rollout of such technologies, for example, the measuring of air qualities, the connection of Internet of Things um, is uh, owned and operated by, for example, primary schools and secondary schools. So uh, the teacher and their students have the ultimate control of the deployment of such devices. They learn data stewardship, data journalism, uh, the sharing of data for uh, public good and so on, uh, based on um, Arduino or Raspberry Pi uh, deployments. So that's not just a communication layer, but actually the infrastructural layer is community owned and community operated. And because of that, the students are much more empowered and they feel that they are contributing to, for example, whether their parents uh, go outdoor to uh, run in the morning uh, depends on their contributions on their school or balcony on the air pollution level. Uh, and that is then taken as pro-social and they do have a say on how much of more investment is needed in that community or whether the pollution should be monitored more on the industrial parks on this side uh, or on the development square on the other side and so on. So my suggestion is very simple. Um, we need to um, include everyone, uh, leave no one behind, and uh, we must not do anything about some people without the contribution of those people. And once that is done, I believe there will be no significant uh, resistance uh, in introduction because it's after all technologies adapting to where the people are instead of asking people to adapt to the uh, logic of technologies. Thank you very much. はい、ありがとうございました。次は宮崎県庁の若手職員からということで、はい。Ah,、uh, hello. My name is Aiko Noguchi. I'm working at the industry and commerce department. Ah,、uh, thank you very much for taking time today. I'm very honored to talk with you. Uh, I just want to talk about the small businesses.、Uh, for example, uh, digital, mo uh, digital business model like、uh, internet sales, cashless payment,、uh, digital signature.、Uh, small business owners, such as a very small shop run by one old person, or street、uh, stores, market stores. Taxis, not all, but some of the owners are not so eager to introduce di digital devices.、Uh, so, one of the key, I think, is that how to make them feel more specific、uh, benefits,、uh, specific benefits of introduction. So, I want to ask you is how to、uh, make the clear. The benefits of introduction of digital tools. Thank you.、Uh, this is an extremely important topic.、Uh, indeed, in Taiwan, we're facing the same situation. Most of the Uh, enterprises in Taiwan is small and medium enterprises. And by small, I mean really small, like less than six people in staff in total. And many of them, especially、uh, providing food services and so on,、uh, are increasingly、uh, senior. This is exactly the same.、Uh, what we have done、uh, is two,、uh, twofold. One is that、uh, we have a program called T Cloud、uh, for Taiwan Cloud. Uh, that provide uh, subsidized uh, deployment fees、uh, up to, I believe, 125,000 yen、uh, and across any number of cloud services that they can try. So, for example,、uh, during the、uh, revitalization period after the、um, COVID wave、uh, last year,、uh, we introduced、uh, free、um, spending money、uh, for, for everyone. Uh, and a lot of people choose to redeem uh, that uh, using mobile payments,、uh, mobile credit card, or Apple Pay, or whatever pay, Google Pay, and so on.、Uh, and because each person、uh, who claimed that digitally、uh, have around 20,000 yen、uh, to spend this way. This creates an influx of、uh, mobile shopping or credit card shopping uh, money uh, to those people. And then they can receive the subsidized、uh, payment 
that instead of buying any device, they can just use their own iPad because many use iPad to watch streaming videos. So they already know how to use an iPad uh, or their own phone uh, with NFC or QR code capabilities and just install some software to transform that into a point of sale device that can then accept uh, some form of contact-free uh, payment and so on. Uh, and because 80% uh, of that setup fee is subsidized by the government, uh, they don't have to pay a lot of upfront cost. Uh, and our Ministry of Finance, the Tax Bureau, also said that if they are a small or medium operator, um, the uh, taxation for those uh, is waived. They don't have to pay an extra uh, business tax. So they uh, lose nothing uh, to try it out and they gain something if they uh, capture some of those uh, revitalization money. So that's the first thing is a structural uh, subsidy. And the second thing is a, a, another uh, point is the talent. We have uh, the same um, people, the small and medium enter enterprise administration, uh, running the uh, training talent transformation or 3T, uh, I call it the transformation ambassador program. And the program very simply put is for people freshly graduated, uh, so people in their early 20s. They don't have to be majoring in business or IT. They can be majoring in anything, uh, but they are paid subsidized by the small and medium enterprise administration to help the elderly people uh, in some of the more rural areas to adopt the T Cloud and many other services. Uh, again, their salary is paid by the government for a uh, period of around half a year, and five of them form a team like interns, but we don't call them interns. They are reverse mentors, really. They are mentors to those senior people to adopt those digital transformation. And so because they learn something, uh, they with, work with their mentors themselves and a group of five, uh, they don't have to pay uh, their tuition, uh, they're subsidized by the state. So we get a lot of people who are educated uh, in urban areas, in the best universities, in large metropolis um, to voluntarily work uh, as reverse mentors in the more rural areas to enable talent-based uh, uh, digital transformation. And after all, it helps their uh, employment. Their portfolio looks really good. Um, their first uh, career begins as something that's very much connected uh, with the future. Instead of being treated as interns and assigned tasks, they can actually work as peers with those small business owners. And that enables the young people to feel much better about their career choices in the future. I hope that answers your question. ありがとうございます。宮崎の皆さん、日本全国で課題となっておりますので、今のお話参考にさせていただきます。それではもう一回戻りまして、高校生、先ほど最前列、入ってあげられた。Hello, my name is Ai Ito. I'm a high school student of Miyazaki Omiya High School. Thank you so much for your time and for joining in with this event. I have some questions. You told us that young people's power are important in making the society better. Now in Japan, many students are unable to go to school because of their difficult human relationships with their teachers, peers, or family members. They don't feel encouraged and they don't understand the importance of finishing school. Do you think going to school is important for them to have a role in the society in the future? If yes, what should they do and what can we do to help them? I would appreciate it if you answer my question. Thank you. The answer is no. I am a middle school dropout after all. So, and obviously, uh, dropping out of middle high school um, did me much good. Uh, but uh, I think uh, the question here is not about completing uh, the curriculum in the school, but about not aborting the process of learning uh, when they uh, do not participate in the school curriculum anymore. What I'm trying to say is that school, uh, to me, is not the only place uh, that people can learn. Um, although uh, my dropping out of the school is fully blessed by the head of my school, actually the principal said uh, she will um, 
essentially fake the records. So I, I don't uh, need to get into trouble. So I can uh, start my uh, career uh, in a startup myself uh, when I was 15. So I was blessed uh, by the head of the school. But she also uh, emphasized the importance of a community, a learning community that one can enroll to. Uh, in my case, uh, I enrolled uh, as a uh, observer, really, in a nearby university, almost as soon as I dropped out of middle school. But mostly I spent time on the open research community, uh, Cornell University's archive network, ARXIV, uh, so that I can find researchers around the world uh, and work together to do research. Um, and so I think what's important is for the schools to continue to provide people who decide not to go to school anymore, the same set of resources and services available, preferably online, but maybe also as activities uh, and so on, so that one can uh, use a more peer-to-peer -peer relationship uh, with the schools. So there's no obligation, but there is a lot of resource if you choose to go to there. Indeed, in the past 10 years, uh, there's more and more people who choose to homeschool uh, or alternatively schooled in Taiwan, but because we have a law that said people in the same age should enjoy exactly the same resources. So when they want to find people to play um, uh, basketball or something together, or they want to get vaccinated or any service provided uh, by their local schools, they can still go back to the school to enjoy such resources and services while maintaining their own schedule, now completely legal uh, in, in such a way. I understand that it is not yet uh, the case in Japan, but our experience in the past decade shows that it really creates a much fair uh, relationship between the parents and the schools so that there's a lot of motivation in school now to adapt to the real needs of individualized um, experience and personalized learning uh, as demanded by the school's uh, parents and students. It creates more democratic relationship for real participation. So that's the experience in Taiwan. I hope that answered your question. Thank you very much. はい、ありがとうございました。それでは次大学生グループどなたか。あ、じゃあどうぞ。日本語で失礼します。宮崎大学の川野瀬也と申します。大学では高齢者が多いという問題があり、それを解決するためにインクルーシブな社会を実現させ
Now, that's not the, what the kiosks are made for, uh, actually, in the beginning. Uh, but we checked with all the convenience store chains, and they can actually change the software. So their kiosks accept uh, passwordless uh, universal health card just for mask uh, purchasing. Uh, and so a input from the elderly people uh, indeed became our national policy. And then Grandma Yang uh, can then uh, convince people in her community who are younger than her, 66 years old, 55 years old, of this innovation because, well, that's her idea after all, right? So the more they participate in the very beginning stages of drafting, formulating the designs, the better they will be your allies in spreading your uh, creations and communities because they have a lot of personal links across communities. So just involve them early uh, and uh, just spend time with them to ask what, what do you feel? What's your take on this? Uh, that's my uh, answer to your question. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Please let me speak in English. So uh, my name is Aoi Hidaka. I'm running a travel company located in uh, Takachiho town. It's really, really small town. Then uh, the population is only maybe the 12, uh, 10,000 people only. But uh, I found some very, very beautiful and irreplaceable culture there. So that's why we are trying to figure out how we can sustain our very beautiful culture and uh, you know history then um this is my question is uh, i we would like to know if there are any way to uh, utilize the digital for a uh, cultural transmission underway in taiwan so mm -hmm. yes so uh, because um, the reason why i'm asking this question so um, sometimes it, it is really difficult to, uh, so when we are facing some difficulties to uh, how we are well be well balanced between the capitalism and so what, what, what is the important for the as a human beings. So sometimes, so, mm -hmm. yes. so yeah, yeah, it is, it is, okay. it is one of uh, our, so some uh, difficulties or just the things we want to solve it in Takacho town. I would like to ask you. Yes, um, in Taiwan, uh, we see the right to, to communicate, the right to learn, the right to health and so on uh, as fundamental human rights. Uh, and they do not actually follow the logic of capitalism. Indeed, universal health care in Taiwan is single payer and it's definitely not capitalist uh, logic at all, right? So uh, a lot of those essential services, uh, the question become, how do we make it as efficient or even more efficient than the capitalism way of allocating uh, through venture capitals and so on, uh, worthwhile projects that contributes to the common good, to the public good in a way that scales, is open to innovation uh, in a plural way uh, without relying on just a few decision makers because each of us have only limited way of um, thinking of new ideas. So this is a really, really good question. Um, in, in Taiwan, uh, we have this uh, method called presidential hackathon. Uh, and uh, the presidential hackathon website, uh, which I, I pasted to, to WebEx, but it's really easy to find, um, basically said any rural town uh, can actually write their wish uh, to the SDGs aligned goals. So you can wish anything. Uh, and it costs nothing uh, to submit such wish. All you have to have is a local uh, SMS number, as I previously mentioned. Uh, and then uh, those wishes are divided into two categories. One is that one can be done within the five years time frame, or the ones that cannot be done uh, five years or longer. Uh, it will need some future technology. Now, the short term ones are put in a national voting called quadratic voting. And the way of quadratic voting says that if your idea has synergy with other ideas, then both will get more votes instead of competing, again, a zero-sum uh, budget. So it uh, makes it easier if your idea solves the problem for many uh, areas in a similar shape. So it's a 
innovation in voting methods. And every year we get top 20 ideas that could be done in the short term and uh, incubate them in some small areas. And the five ones that show the most promise receive a trophy from uh, our president, Dr. Tsai Ing-wen, which is a shape of Taiwan with a micro projector underneath. If you turn on the projector, it projects Dr. Tsai Ing-wen giving you the trophy. So it describes itself uh, and promising that whatever uh, your idea is, it will gain the budget, personnel, and regulation support as if it's a presidential promise in the next uh, fiscal year. So then your idea became uh, a public um, infrastructure. And the thing is that it amplifies not just the idea that serves one particular locality, but rather ideas that could spread in a way that works for all localities uh, in Taiwan. Now, the ideas that would take five or more years of technology to mature, we work with film directors, of designers, of writers, and so on, and create immersive experiences. So people can put on a pair of goggles or something, uh, step into an immersive theater, uh, and experience that future. And we invite researchers, engineers into that reality, that future reality to inform their uh, design and research agenda so they can serve this imagination as uh, proposed by someone in the rural area that gained widespread support, but is infeasible in the next five years. So the hackathon and the idea done uh, are the ways for us to get the aligned visions for everyone and then uh, introduce innovations as the technologies become available. I hope that answer your question. It's very abstract, I know, but it was a abstract question to begin with. Uh, so um, thank you very much. I like your phrase. Uh, this DAO is connecting people to people. I do believe so. Then, so the yes. power of will make the change and uh, make the future. So I do believe, and I will try to figure out how we can do for the next generation. Thank you very much. Arigato日本語で話します。こんにちは。えっと、国民の人たちの声を聞きながら彼らに安心とか納得を得ながら新しい未来を作っていく上で公務員はどうあるべきだと思われるかもしくはアドバイス3つも提案政府の皆さんにアドバイスをしていることがあれば教えてください。uh, my um, uncles and aunts and my grandparents were all in public service. Uh, so I <laughs> come from a family uh, that is very uh, aligned with public service uh, thoughts. Uh, that is to say, uh, we serve everyone, not just our customers. I think that's the most important uh, difference. And to serve everyone, to work for the people nowadays also means work with the people. Uh, instead of we making all the decisions, it's much easier uh, and uh, much more uh, safe if we just begin by saying, okay, so what does people actually want? And people who feel strongly about something, maybe we can listen to them even before we formulate our own ideas. Previously, when all you have is radio or television or newspaper, it's easy to talk to millions of people, but it's very hard to listen to millions of people. But nowadays, with public infrastructures, such as the joint platform in Taiwan or in Japan, there's PolyPoly, Poly, there's uh, Polis, there's many other tools uh, that can listen uh, at, uh, with each other in scale. Uh, it's easier if we start deploying such tools as early as possible for all the major policies. And then you can say uh, it's everyone's business, so everybody must help. And that uh, avoids burnout because I firmly believe that of all people, public servants need to sleep for eight hours or more 
every night because we need to consider many different viewpoints and without sufficient sleep, uh, we will commit bias. That's just human nature. So outsourcing into the crowdsourcing uh, is my suggestion to my Taiwanese uh, colleagues in the public uh, sector. And of course, maintaining sufficient num uh, hours of sleep. Uh, that is actually what retains the best talent in the public sector because for the Taiwan Semiconductor Company or many other companies in Taiwan, they are now paying very, very high salaries. Uh, we cannot compete with them on salaries alone, but we can say because we deployed such um, uh, new ways of working with the people, I guarantee that you will not overwork. Uh, you will be back home by 7 p.m. at latest uh, and you will not suffer a burnout. And that's what retains some of the talents in the public sector, even though that the Taiwanese private sector is giving very good package. I hope that answered the question. すごい、すばしい。よくてがかった。日本語で、日本語で失礼します。えっと、佐川高校 あの、yeah, we're all very concerned uh, about uh, earthquake that just happened, uh, and we will, of course, do what we can uh, to help, uh, as the Japanese people have helped Taiwan in our earthquakes uh, in the past. Now, uh, for developers uh, in Taiwan, there is a shared resource called a CIVO IoT Taiwan. If you search for CIVO IoT, you will find it. Uh, and it covers not just the earthquakes, but also disasters of all kinds, floods, or even uh, air pollution, uh, or even uh, a disaster in our cyber security infrastructure, and so on. Uh, and so, uh, because uh, time is currently limited for my speech, I would in, uh, encourage you to check out the Civil IoT uh, website for the developer resources. But uh, I think the general idea is the same uh, in that the government should provide the APIs and infrastructures to enable innovations uh, from application developers such as yourself. On the other hand, the application developers need to be transparent on how the data is collected and used and set up uh, trusted data trusts or data intermediaries so that those individual uses of the data could be then aggregated in a privacy uh, enhancing way and the country build back to policy making only when uh, the open data is complemented with crowdsourced uh, shared data can we actually enable a good circular relationship on policy improvement? Otherwise, uh, the public sector would be in essentially providing our open data in a blind way. Uh, I already gave an example of the pharmacy distribution of masks and how the distribution can be amplified by people analyzing the data and suggesting something better. So I would say uh, even for just as quick advanced warnings, uh, how to uh, set the drills, uh, how to uh, spread the, the ideas about when to find shelter, where to find shelter, and so on. There's are plenty of ways to contribute. Eve, the application developers also serve as one of the bridges to uh, get ideas from the population and then feedback in a way that's privacy enhancing uh, into the decision makers. So uh, work on both directions, not just publicizing information, but also aggregating information is my main suggestion. ありがとうございます。はい、え、
Yes, um, I really uh, am honored uh, to receive uh, such thoughtful questions, and I believe we do share exactly the same values about inclusive innovation and about plurality, not top down singularity when it comes to the sources across generations. So I look forward uh, to more exchange uh, with you in the future, and hopefully by the time the travel uh, restriction uh, lowers uh, both of our sides, I can actually visit Japan and in person. And until then, uh, I wish you live long and prosper. Thank you very much. え、大変あの、有意義な時間をいただきましたことに重ねて今日の参加者全員を代表してまた県民を代表して心から感謝を申し上げます。それでは大臣あのモニター越しになりますが、記念撮影を最後によろしいでしょうか。Yes. いたしますので少しお待ちください。よろしいですか。はい、それでは撮影を終了します。皆さんマスクを戻してください。それでは、岡田大臣ありがとうございました。ぜひ、あの、コロナ落ち着いたら宮崎にお越しいただければと思います。ありがとうございました。Thank you. ありがとうございました. Uh, and thank the interpreter. It was extremely smooth. Thank you. はい、以上をもちましてセミナーを閉会いたします。ありがとうございました。